Today, RockShox have released their new electronic suspension adjustment system, which they've called Flight Attendant. It's wireless, electronic only, and uses an algorithm to adjust your suspension. Is this the future of mountain biking tech? Flight Attendant is designed to control the damping in your suspension fork and shock automatically, tuning it to create the most efficient ride possible. This isn't the first system of its kind though. If you cast your mind back, you'll remember that RockShox actually worked alongside Lapierre and Ghost to produce their EI system, which both brands featured on a number of models. And of course, Fox suspension brought us live valve. This enables the fork and shock to rapidly react to the terrain and it also allows you to tune the sensitivity. However, neither systems, many will argue, were perfect. So how does the RockShox flight attendant system actually work? How is it different to what's already out there? And what's it like to ride? I'm gonna dig into those questions, but before that, here are five things you need to know about RockShox flight attendant. Number one, flight attendant uses sensors on your fork, shock, and in the crank set to automatically adjust your suspension damping. Number two, the system is completely wireless. Number three, it's only available on complete bikes from Trek, Specialized Canyon and YT at present. Number four, the system offers plenty of tuning potential to suit the rider's needs. And finally, number five, it cannot make setup recommendations for you. So let's get started. How does the RockShox flight attendant system actually work? Flight attendant is designed to make your suspension work as efficiently as possible. That means firming up the bike when the trail flattens or smooths out, and then eking out as much travel, grip, and comfort as possible once the trail heads downhill. How is this achieved though? Well, the new RockShox flight attendant system consists of a fork control module, a motor module on the rear shock, and a pedal sensor inside the bottom bracket spindle. At its heart is a complex algorithm that does all the decision-making and ensures you're in the right setting at the right time. A new left-hand access controller which uses the latest rock or paddle design allows you to control flight attendant too. Information from the sensors is collected and analysed using the flight attendant algorithm before adjusting suspension between one of the three settings. RockShox claimed that the system is making these suspension position decisions every five milliseconds. Now that is seriously quick but also totally necessary if flight attendant is to feel as fluid and as natural as promised. For example, inside the fork, a needle is moved in and out of the compression assembly using a geared motor, which is similar to that found on the access rear dralia in order to make these adjustments. So when that complex algorithm does want to implement a change, you'll hear a short, sharp buzz, much like you would hear from a SRAM access rear mech as it changes through the settings. Now let's go through the RockShox flight attendant setting and modes. The flight attendant system has three settings which are by and large fairly self-explanatory and they are open, pedal and lock. Now pedal was actually introduced as an extra setting after some initial testing and is deemed to be the best of both worlds. Governing those three settings are the three different modes. These include auto mode, manual mode and finally override mode. In auto mode, it switches between the three settings automatically. This means you can leave the controls well alone and let the system do the thinking. If you're worried that robots are indeed beginning to take over, worry not as the manual mode allows you to toggle between the settings using the designated button on your left hand access controller. Finally, there's the override mode. This enables you to shortcut from auto mode to your designated setting by pushing and holding the designated button on your access controller. What's the difference between this and live valve though? There's actually a number of things that differ between the two systems. First and foremost, flight attendant is completely wireless. It also uses rider input via the pedal sensor in order to make those setting decisions. Live valve, on the other hand, actually stays in the lock setting, opening as soon as it hits a bump or a changing gradient or you encounter a jump. Flight attendant works in the opposite way. 
The idea here is that the system stays open as much as it can, only changing into the firmware setting as and when the algorithm deems it completely necessary. Key to how Flight Attendant works is how the rider sets the bias. The bias can give the system preferences to either the open or lock setting, depending on your riding style or the type of terrain that you're tackling. That means if you're keen to eke out every watt of power each time you ride your bike, setting the bias to plus one or plus two means that Flight Attendant will, at every opportunity, firm up the bike. Equally, if you'd rather the suspension feels more active even when inching your way up the climb, setting the bias to minus one or minus two will make the fork and shock more open, offering a plusher overall ride feel. The neutral central bias setting is designed to give you the best balance of all three settings. If you are with me so far, well done, give yourself a pat on the back. But get ready because there's more. Flight Attendant will allow your fork and shock to be in two different settings simultaneously. Rock shocks refer to this as split state. So for example, if you were in the minus one bias setting, your fork may remain in the open setting while your shock would be in pedal. Great for undulating terrain or for technical climbs. On the other hand, if you had the bias set to plus one, your fork could be in the pedal setting while your shock locked out for a more pedal friendly feel, though arguably it will be less comfortable. Beyond the flight attendant's bias tuning, you can also adjust the setting of your fork and shock separately as well. There's scope to alter the air volume and therefore adjust the spring curve, potentially altering how the fork or shock ramps up through the final third of its travel. Both the fork and rear shock have rebound and low speed compression damping built in too. The low speed compression damping can be adjusted using the control module on the fork or via the Access app. High speed compression damping cannot be changed and is actually preset. While this might limit fine tuning, RockShox's claimed damper performance is still pretty similar to the highly successful Charger 2.1 and shouldn't impact on downhill performance. I'll talk more about this in my initial ride impressions later though. In terms of the RockShox flight attendant fixtures and fittings, RockShox say that physically creating the hardware for flight attendant was actually the easy bit compared to figuring out the software. Still, it seems they appear to have done a very neat job when it comes to the easy bit and how the overall system is packaged. As we've already mentioned, Flight Attendant is wireless, unlike Fox's live valve, which is connected via a series of cables and requires a frame that offers both cable porting and space to fit a control unit and battery. There's also separate access batteries housed on the fork and shock modules, so frame manufacturers don't have the worry of creating a dedicated space for a central control unit and battery. That said, the shock module does add some extra bulk to the shock size, which means that not all frames will have the clearance to fit a flight attendant equipped shock. Arguably the most visible component of the system is the control module that sits on top of the fork with the battery piggybacking off the back of it. While this might look highly susceptible to damage, RockShocks assure us that after years of testing with the module in that location on a variety of test bikes, they have had no crash damage or issues so far. Speaking of batteries, it's worth noting that these are all the same SRAM Axis batteries found on their drivetrains and are all cross compatible. Battery life is a claim 20 to 30 hours on the fork and 30 to 40 hours on the rear shock. The AAA battery used in the pedal sensor should last up to 200 hours. Just like SRAM's other Axis controller, the new left hand unit uses a CR2032 battery which should last 200 hours as well. So how much does all this tech cost? Well, as it stands, Flight Attendant can't be bought as an aftermarket product. I know, I can hear plenty of you furiously typing into the comments right now. How do I get hold of it, I hear you cry? Well, right now it's only available on full bike builds from Trek, Canyon, YT and Specialized. It will likely feature on their higher end SRAM Eagle equipped builds or at least those that use the RockShox Reverb access post. This is because it needs to integrate with the new left hand access controller that's tasked with being able to operate the post itself as well as flight attendant. Now what's it like to live with? Now these are just my initial impressions so far as I haven't had long enough to do a full review but that full review will be coming soon enough. 
I've only had a handful of rides on flight attendants so far, but this has given me a good idea of what the system is like to use. I have flight attendant bolted onto a Trek Slash, a bike I'm very familiar with after it took the top honours in our Enduro Bike of the Year test in 2021. Check out our video of that in the card above me or the link in the video description below. Setting up flight attendant isn't actually too difficult. First, you pair the flight attendant components. So that's the fork and shock modules, as well as the pedal sensor. Those need to be paired with the controller, as well as the reverb access post and the access gearing if you have it. Then you'll need to set your fork and shock sag. So that's your spring pressures, your rebound damping as well, just as you would on any full suspension bike. Once that's done, you'll need to calibrate the flight attendant system, which has to be done on flat ground. There is a step-by-step -step guide on the app for this process, which takes all of two minutes to do and can be done by someone as stupid as me. So it can't be that hard. Most importantly though, what's it like to ride? Well, for comparison's sake, I need to first mention my time on the EI system from all those years ago and more recently Fox's live valve. When I rode the old EI system, I was certainly aware of what was going on as the shock toggled through its different settings. It wasn't as fluid as I'd have liked, but I knew it certainly had some potential. Fox's live valve system, operationally at least, felt much better, providing it was set into the most sensitive setting, making it as reactive and as open as possible. But it did come with a drawback, and that was irritating cable rattle. It's a very different experience with flight attendant as RockShox have done a sterling job at delivering a fully cohesive, refined and super slick system in a well presented package. You'll hear the buzz from the motor from time to time as it toggles through the different settings, but as the trail gets more engaging or the scenery more dramatic, it's easy to forget flight attendant is beavering away beneath you. You only need to ride the same section of undulating trail twice once with flight attendant in auto mode and once with it left to the open setting to feel just how effective it can be. So perfect setup is a properly pain-free process if you know what you're looking for out of the bike. Getting the bias set requires a little more trial and error. While I started the first day in the middle neutral position, part way up a slow, loose technical climb, I was finding it hard to keep my rear wheel gripping. The back end of the bike was firming up more than I really felt was necessary. Setting the bias of the system to the minus one position seemed to really help and the rear wheel traction improved as a result of it. It's clear that the bias setting really is critical to the overall ride feel. I found that as the slash already pedals pretty well with the suspension fully open, running the bias more towards the open end of the spectrum didn't have any drawbacks and helped on the slower, more technical climbs. One thing I wanted to try and get my head around and understand was how the algorithm prioritizes exactly what it does and when. What happens if you're riding over some rough terrain and want to keep pedaling, but don't want your suspension to lock out? What will happen? Well, according to RockShox, the algorithm will take in the wheel, bump and pedal inputs and try to make a decision based on both. In reality, when I tried pedaling through that flat, chunky trail with the bias in the minus one or minus two positions, the suspension did in fact remain reactive and worked away beneath me, just as you'd expect. And what about that lack of high-speed compression damping adjustment? Well, I'll admit to being somewhat of a dial twiddler and I like my suspension to feel just right. Despite having less fettling potential, I was still happy with how the bike felt though. Now, if you're lucky enough to have the option and use high-speed compression, tell us all about it in the comments below. RockShox seems to have done a great job in terms of tune and feel and once I was pointing downhill I could let the bike work away beneath me. There was never any second guessing or head scratching as to what was actually going on. Technical single track where momentum is hard to conserve is where I really appreciated the system. Overall I've been seriously impressed with how well RockShox have executed this. Of course, you could easily argue that it adds cost and complexity to an already expensive and complicated bike, which technically it does. But if you're looking to eke out the most of your ride and love cutting edge tech, then Flight Attendant really is worth checking out. 
We'll do a full ride review for Flight Attendant in the next few months, so keep an eye out for that on BikeRadar.com. What do you guys think about the new flight attendant system? Is it overly complex and costly? Would you prefer to stay in control of your fork and shock? Or do you really think this is the future of mountain biking? Please let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a new video, you get a notification. Thank you and goodbye.